The Ostomy Nurse Project. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of the Ostomy Nurse Project. Today's episode is focusing on the irrigation conversation. If you've heard that term before, it's a fancy little phrase talking about people who irrigate their colostomy as a means of gaining control over their bowel motions. And this episode is probably tailored more towards people who have an end colostomy, stoma nurses who are interested in teaching this technique to patients, and people who are generally curious about whether or not irrigation is suitable for them or whether it might be a procedure that you could implement into your life as a means of maintaining some semblance of continence when you live with an incontinent stoma like a colostomy. And I'm going to be quoting from several articles located in the Journal of Stomal Therapy Australia, as well as Ostomy Australia, and even some of the company websites that describe the products that they allow on the Stoma Appliance Scheme for stoma irrigation. And these articles that I'm quoting from, I'm going to be crediting some stoma nurses who provided them, um, namely Pat Walls, uh, Helen Nodrum, and Lillian Leonard, whose documents that they provided to the journals some years ago are still very relevant to this day, and so I will be quoting from some of their articles. So firstly, what is stoma irrigation? Colostomy irrigation, or stoma irrigation, is the installation of fluid, so water, into the colon via the stoma. If you listen to my Stoma's Horrible Histories episode, I did touch on it briefly when I said that stoma irrigation is basically like colonic irrigation, but the purpose and meaning of them is slightly different as well as the entry point for said fluid. And the process of teaching stoma irrigation to patients has sort of fallen out of favour over previous years, possibly due to perhaps a lack of outpatient service or the ability to teach people to irrigate, um, possibly because some stoma nurses aren't necessarily familiar with the procedure or how to teach it to patients. And so it's sort of fallen out of favour and is not readily encouraged for people who have an end colostomy, when it really should be, because the process itself can provide the person who has a stoma with the opportunity to regain control of their bowel functions. Because a stoma really is a form of incontinence. We no longer have the muscles in, in the form of a rectum to hold our waste in, and it comes out and it goes into the bag. So there's no predictability over the bowel motions of when they come out. But through irrigation and controlling those bowel motions, we can get back some of that control and that independence over our bowel motions. And so it's probably fallen a little bit by the wayside also because stoma irrigation can really only be taught to a very small portion of people who have stomas formed, which I'm going to talk about in a minute. But really, it's only people with an end colostomy who have the option. And then there are obviously a lot of medical conditions that that person with a colostomy may have that may prevent them from being able to irrigate as well. So there's actually a very small group of people who are eligible to irrigate. And so that may be why some stoma nurses have never had to teach the process or don't have the facilities to teach the process because there's so few people really in, in some hospitals who would be eligible to do that. And because it's a practice that is often taught much later on after a stoma has been formed, um, it's sometimes very hard to get back in touch with the patient and follow on later on down the track and bring them back into the hospital or the community setting to teach them these processes. Now, the purpose of stoma irrigation is to clear the whole bowel, the large bowel, of all of its contents so that it remains empty for a period of time. Therefore, you won't have a bowel motion for perhaps 24 to 48 hours giving the colon time to fill up again before you irrigate and cleanse the contents um, a day or two later. So you're, you're performing this cycle of irrigation so that essentially you're practically never having a bowel motion at unpredictable times. And through irrigation, the bowel gets trained to evacuate waste, perhaps once, like I said, once every day or once every second day or third day, but it's predictable and it gives the patient a known interval time. So they can time when they're having their bowel motions. They don't have to worry about leaks or perhaps 
gas or having to find a facility to change their bags. They have control over that again. And the technique may also be useful so that you don't have to wear big pouches. You can get away with wearing a very small, discreet pouch, and that may be something of interest, particularly to the younger generation or any person who is in an intimate relationship and they want a smaller, more discreet pouch. Uh, If they have a colostomy, then certainly irrigation can be helpful so that you don't have to wear a full-size standard or large pouch. Now, what is irrigation not? Irrigation is not about washing the bowel. It's not about cleanliness. Some people uh, misinterpret the idea of irrigation of water through the stoma to improve the bowel health. And that probably comes from people who had said at the time that they felt less bloated, they feel better in themselves, they feel cleaner by having um, passed water through the bowel. But it's important to know that that is not the purpose of stoma irrigation. The purpose is to create tension inside and increase the pressure within the lumen of the large bowel to stimulate the peristalsis reflex. So the bowel responds to those signals saying that it's full, causing it to compress and squeeze out the contents. You are just stimulating the contraction of the bowel to allow the waste to exit. And so some of the advantages of of irrigating via a stoma is, as I just mentioned, regaining control of fecal elimination being able to choose the timing of your bowel motions can be beneficial, particularly for people who are either very busy or who work in different areas, particularly for people who travel. Being able to time the bowel motions is advantageous for some people. It can also reduce gas and odour because you're not constantly having an output of faecal matter. Again, if you can do irrigation successfully, you can wear smaller pouches Now, when I talk about the fact that there are advantages to stoma irrigation, every action has a reaction and there are certain disadvantages to stoma irrigation. Stoma irrigation is time consuming from the time that you set up your supplies to instilling the water, waiting to evacuate the bowel completely. It can take you, when, especially when you're first learning, anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour to have a full evacuation from set up to pack up. It is a long procedure. And yes, you can get well versed at it over time. But it may still take a significant portion of your day. And, you know, especially if you've got little children around or if you don't have that time of day to irrigate the stoma, it can be problematic. Now, at the same time that I was just saying uh, the same time every day can be an advantage for some people, it can also be a disadvantage for some people. Having to irrigate at the same time every, every time can be tricky to negotiate around because sometimes you are busy on a particular day or sometimes your schedule may not work out as you would like it. And so the same time of day can actually be seen as a disadvantage for some people. And the same again can be said for people who travel. Whilst irrigation can be seen as an advantage for people who travel so that they can time their bowel motion so that they're not having to change their bag perhaps mid-flight, it can also be seen as a disadvantage for anybody who travels and stays in hotels or for people who travel and may not have ready access to bathroom facilities. Taking around your equipment to be able to irrigate can be seen as problematic in some cases. Not all the time, but it can be seen as problematic. Now, there are certain criteria for people who are allowed to irrigate, and unfortunately, it narrows down the window of eligible people who can perform stoma irrigation. So who can irrigate? Only people who have a descending or sigmoid end colostomies should be irrigated. So ileostomies, you cannot irrigate. There is no point in irrigating an ileostomy because you will be emptying effluent that is so liquid that it would not give you any pause in between having bowel motions. The liquid would come through almost instantaneously, uh, so that it's pointless. You would also be disrupting the absorption of the key nutrients that you have when you're passing effluent through your small intestine. 
you have to have the motivation to be able to do the procedure because it takes time. If you are not willing to consider the concept of putting a cone inside your stoma and flushing water into your bowel, then obviously the idea is not going to prompt you to want to do it and certainly take it on as a regular practice. Age, mental activity, you know, people who have good manual dexterity, you are operating equipment. So if you are not capable of operating this equipment or you don't have a carer or somebody who will be able to assist you to operate the equipment, then it may not be a procedure that is suitable for you. And it's also not suitable in terms of life expectancy. So people who are perhaps terminally ill or patients who are not expected to survive very long should not consider starting to irrigate. It will not serve its purpose inevitably. And so possibly one of the other reasons that stoma irrigation has fallen out of fashion is because stoma irrigation or the teaching of irrigation is usually done at least six weeks post surgical formation of a stoma. So if you are a person who has a newly formed end colostomy from the descending or sigmoid colon, you may not then see a stoma nurse after your discharge. And so getting back in contact with someone six weeks after your operation, possibly when things are still changing and you're still getting used to learning how to use bags, for instance, Learning to do stoma irrigation may not be reasonable at that time. We have to wait your six weeks for the stoma to heal, for you to start developing scar tissue and to adjust to the emotional aspects of having a stoma in the first place before we can explore the idea of stoma irrigation. The bowel will also have some edema immediately post-op and so irrigating a stoma will not assist in any way. Other factors that prevent people from irrigating their stoma include inflammatory bowel diseases. So if you've got Crohn's or ulcerative colitis or IBS, irrigation is not recommended for you. Stoma prolapse. If you have a stoma prolapse, it can affect the installation or the insertion of the cone and it can cause some difficulties. So we discourage the use of stoma irrigation in the presence of a prolapsed stoma. Damage from Uh, Radiation therapy can make the bowel so friable and damaged and scarred that irrigation may cause unforeseeable damage. And we don't generally encourage stoma irrigation if you have a significantly irradiated and damaged bowel. Mental disorders or poor cognition, as I mentioned. Anxiety about the process. If you are anxious, the bowel will not relax and you won't be able to irrigate effectively. And loop stomas. Loop stomas are a question that I get questioned on a lot. People want to know if they can irrigate even with a loop stoma. There's nothing to stop you from irrigating from a loop stoma, but I will tell you the first direction it's going to go in is in one end and then out the other end. So depending on what type of uh, direction the lumens of your loop stoma flow in. So don't forget a loop stoma, you have two holes, a defunctioned part and a functioning part. You can certainly irrigate the functioning part, but because the lumen of the defunctioned colon still travels elsewhere, water will slip into that area and you will likely pass water per rectally or out of the anus and not out of the stoma, which means you're not going to get adequate installation into the functional part of your bowel. So loop stomas are contraindicated for stoma irrigation also. So from a stomal therapy nurse point of view, at the time of examining a patient and seeing whether they are suitable for stoma irrigation, you need to ascertain whether they have things like a stomal stenosis um, so that you can or cannot insert the cone safely. If the patient has a hernia, you'll need to obviously palpate and make sure that it's either a reducible hernia or if it's not strangulated, is the patient going to be able to irrigate with a hernia? Other assessments, you should be comparing the patient's colostomy management. So if the patient has good control over their bowel motions, they're happy with their bags, their diet is under control and their output is not a concern for them, then it's probably unnecessary to encourage the use of stoma irrigation. The patient would have to provide justification as to why they want to irrigate and that will help you formulate a plan for that particular person.
And now with stoma irrigation, the products that are used to perform the procedure are available on the stoma appliance scheme. But bear in mind that A, they are a restricted item. So any patient that is interested in irrigating via their colostomy needs to have written approval from a stoma nurse and their surgeon, which goes to their ostomy association to give approval that they can order irrigation products. Not to say that they can irrigate, but to say that they are suitable to order the irrigation products and perform the procedure. Thankfully, uh, the equipment is available on the Stoma Appliance Scheme and you can order it once you have approval. On the Stoma Appliance Scheme, you get one irrigation kit per annum. So you get the complete setup that you need in one kit and that is it for the year. The only products that you can continue to order monthly are things like the irrigation sleeves that you apply and remove and discard when you've been irrigating. All the other products, so the cone, the installation bag, the tubing, the regulator, all of those products are in the kit that you get once a year. So have a chat to your patients about the types of irrigation products that are available on the scheme. At the moment, I think there's only two brands that are available, but they do come in different sizes and um, functionalities. So discuss with the patient what their goals are, what they would be comfortable using, before they go and order any products because you need to make sure that it's going to be the right product for them because if they order the wrong one, the Ostomy Association won't take it back and they won't be able to irrigate effectively. All right, let's get down to the nitty gritty. Let's talk about the procedure um, or the setup for stoma irrigation. Now, just as a matter of interest, before I start talking about the process for irrigation, there are two websites for the two companies that do provide irrigation kits on the stoma appliance scheme. And both of those websites have got videos on how to irrigate. So you can either go to the Coloplast website, which is coloplast.com.au, or wherever you are, you can Google um, or type into your search engine Coloplast Stoma Irrigation, and you can do the same for the Dansac website. So dansac.com.au, you can also find it on the Liberty Medical website over here in Australia. But if you type in stoma irrigation, they will both bring up videos of the process of how to set up an irrigator stoma. So an irrigation kit that I just spoke about contains several parts. It contains a water bag, which has a hook on it, um, and it has a tube attached to that with a flow regulator. The regulator is going to indicate how fast or how slow you instill the fluid into the stoma. At the very end of that tubing, you have a stoma cone, which is a very soft cone that is lubricated. And that is what you place just inside the stoma so that you can begin to instill the fluid. Aside from that contraption, you have a long plastic irrigation sleeve. We call it a sleeve, and that is the part that attaches around your stoma. So you stick it on much like a bag, or you click it on with the form of a belt, depending on which brand of product that you use. But the idea is that the sleeve sticks on over your stoma. It has an openable end at the top so that you can get the cone into your stoma, and it has a drainable end that sits down into the toilet bowl. So as the bowel evacuates, it will go down through the long sleeve and into the toilet. Now water is the other ingredient as part of stoma irrigation. It is just plain tap water. It is not a sterile procedure. The bowel is not sterile. It is a clean procedure and you would certainly choose to wash your hands before and after performing irrigation, but you can use tap water. The important thing about the tap water is that it has to be body temperature, which when I say that I mean core body temperature which is about 37 degrees Celsius. So when, when we're talking about irrigation, you want the water to be as close as possible to body temperature because if you are instilling water that is too cold, it puts the bowel into a state of shock and it cramps, it tightens up because it's a cranky little organ. It doesn't like being showered with cold water. So you will get cramps if the water's too cold. If the water is too hot, you can do damage to the very delicate mucosa inside the bowel and you can actually cause yourself some burns. So it needs to be the ideal temperature. Now the way to do that, there's a couple of ways to do that. Some of the products have a thermometer built into the water bag so it will tell you when it's at the ideal temperature. 
other bags that don't have that temperature gauge, you can simply put your elbow in or you can put your hand in it and test it. If it feels warm to the touch, then that is fine. If it feels hot, allow it to cool down a little bit or add some cold water. If it feels tepid or on the cooler side, you need to add warmer water. And the we always tend to say err on the side of caution and go a little bit warmer than what you're used to because our external temperature is not the same as our core temperature. And you know, sometimes when you put your finger into some what we think is warm water and it feels unusually hot, that is probably because the external temperature on your body makes the water feel hotter than it actually is. So make sure that you're very careful when you're putting in the water into your water bag and make sure that you can get it at approximately 37 degrees. If that means you need to put a thermometer in it, so be it. But you can usually judge the temperature by just feeling it. And you'll get used to that as you continue to irrigate and you learn. If that's a concern for you, though, you can talk to your stoma nurse and they can advise you on which water bag has a temperature gauge built into it. Now, earlier when I said the water bags have a hole or a hook to be able to hang, you need to be able to hang your water bag above shoulder height so that gravity can come down and instill the fluid. If your bag is set too low, there is no pump to pump it upwards and into your stoma. So they all come with a hole. You can either hang it with a coat hanger or if you've got a special hook in your bathroom or wherever you choose to irrigate, you need to be able to hang that bag level with or above shoulder height so that you can instill properly. Now you as the patient should be sitting comfortably. Um, That can be either on a chair in front of the toilet bowl or you can stand in front of the toilet bowl, whatever you feel more comfortable with. But if you're irrigating for the first time, it's usually easier to do it sitting first where you can be calm and relaxed and take your time to learn the procedure. Now, here's a bit of an icky part that some people don't actually consider. When we first start to teach you stoma irrigation, we have to determine what direction the lumen of your bowel travels in. And so with a lubricated finger, usually a little finger, we insert a finger just inside the stoma, bypassing the abdominal wall muscle, and then we feel which direction the bowel travels in, because it may be different for certain people depending on how their operation went or their general anatomy. Once we've established what direction the bowel travels in, future irrigation sessions, we can teach the patient to determine that themselves if the patient feels comfortable inserting a lubricated finger into the stoma themselves. And we usually offer gloves to facilitate that process. Now, once you've established the direction of the lumen of your bowel, this is where you can start to insert the stoma cone. So your stoma cone attaches to the regulator tube. The regulator tube attaches to the irrigation tube. It sounds like I'm singing the song from the thigh bones connected to the, but that's the process. If you're concerned about how to set up, there's plenty of instructions online. But When you insert the cone into the stoma, go gently at first, but you need to be able to insert the cone so far as it's going to block off the flow of water as it travels into the colon. If you don't insert far enough, when you start to instill your fluid, it's simply going to dribble out the sides and out of your stoma and not up into your colon where it needs to go. So make sure that the cone is inserted well enough. It shouldn't be painful. If you find that you put the cone in and you feel uh, tightening around the stoma, that's quite normal. Keep the cone in place, take a few deep breaths and wait for that piece of bowel to relax and you may be able to insert the cone a little bit further. But it's important not to force the cone in too far so that it's painful. If you feel that it is painful, stop the procedure and contact your stoma nurse or Try again five minutes later if you feel comfortable and more relaxed. Now, once the stoma cone is securely in place, you've put it in, you're feeling comfortable, you can then start to instill your warm water into the bowel. Now, when we're first teaching people, we usually suggest filling up your water bag to about a litre to 1.2 litres. That doesn't mean that that's the full amount that you're going to instill. It may be, but we often teach you first to start with that amount because what will happen is when you have fully instilled the colon right up to the ileocecal valve, you will have a sensation of pressure and fullness like there's a bowel motion ready to happen. You'll feel pressure inside the abdomen. 
that will determine initially the amount of fluid that is suitable for you to irrigate with. And that can be different for every single person. Some people can get an effective irrigation with only 500 mils of fluid. Some people, depending on their condition and their bowel, may irrigate with anywhere between 1.2 to 1.5 litres, sometimes even beyond. But the idea is that the aim of irrigation is to actually instill all of the water at one interval into the bowel before allowing it to evacuate. You don't do a little bit and evacuate, a little bit and evacuate. You have to instill all or as much water as you can until you feel full to get a complete evacuation. So then the water runs into the colon um, as regulated by how fast or how slow you allow it to move in. That's where your regulator cable comes in. And so usually it runs over about anywhere from five to seven minutes. If you flow the water in too quickly, you may suffer from cramps and it may make you feel a little bit unwell. If that happens, you can slow down the installation rate. And it's important not to stop the whole procedure at this point if you feel a bit uncomfortable because you still want to be able to instill the full amount into the bowel. So slow down your regulator, keep the cone in place, Take a few deep relaxing breaths and you will find that the colon will likely relax and slow down and you will then be able to continue instill instilling your fluid. If the discomfort persists and you are finding that the process is too painful, then of course stop and try again at another time or contact your stomal therapy nurse for advice. But you should try and instill as much of the fluid as you can until you get that fullness that sensation of being full. Now when that happens, you pay attention to how much fluid you have instilled so that you can experiment with that amount again the next time you irrigate. That will largely indicate the volume of water that you will irrigate with most of the time. Once all of the water is instilled and you have that sensation, it's time to remove the cone. You may want to wait a minute or two after instilling all of your fluid just to allow the water to mix and settle inside the colon. But after that time, you can remove the cone and you need to fairly quickly fold over the top of your irrigation sleeve because what will happen is there will be quite a sudden evacuation and if you haven't got the top of that pouch folded over in time you're going to get some back spray and we don't want back spray we want a nice clean irrigation and we want it all to come out into the sleeve and not up into your face or over the top and onto your nice lovely clothes now, most of the evacuation will happen in the first 10 to 15 minutes after irrigation. There will be a lot of pressure inside the bowel, and so it stimulates that peristalsis to push that fluid and evacuate the fluid out of the colon. What you do in between then is you can periodically uh, roll up the sleeve, peg it shut or tape it shut, whatever you prefer, but you would have to go back to the toilet periodically to continue to empty that sleeve. You can rinse the sleeve with some of the water left over in the water bag with the irrigation cone if you want to, but you can also wait until the end of the procedure to rinse out that bag. Now it's at this point that we usually encourage the person to move around. So fold up your pouch, don't sit there any longer in front of the toilet waiting for the bowel to evacuate. Once you've had your initial evacuation, you can roll up that sleeve, you can put a dressing gown on or you can get into some comfortable clothes and you can walk around and the motion of moving around can further stimulate the colon to empty the remainder. And we actually recommend that you do that. The colon will probably ultimately take anywhere from half an hour to 40 minutes to fully evacuate from start to finish. And so that's essentially the procedure of irrigating the colon. Once you have finished and you feel completely empty, if you've waited a while and there's no further output from the stoma, you can remove the irrigation sleeve and either pop on a mini miniature bag or you can pop on your standard pouch if you're learning for the first time because it will be important to take note of the time that passes in between your irrigation and when you next have a bowel motion because that can then indicate to us whether we need to titrate the volume of fluid that is being irrigated or increase or decrease the frequency of irrigation sessions. That's something that would be negotiated with your stomal therapy nurse. 
And so after learning to irrigate the colon effectively, you are then required to practice at the same time each day. So initially do it daily. That's so that the colon can become trained and get used to being irrigated and so that you as the patient can become familiar with the process and become confident in being able to irrigate effectively. And after a few weeks, when you do feel confident in the procedure, you may decide to start adjusting certain elements of your irrigation process. If you are irrigating effectively, you know your volumes of water that are working well, and you are not having a bowel motion for approximately 24 to 48 hours, you can assume that the process is effective for you. If you are having issues with your irrigation, for instance, if you're having early output of fecal effluent even with irrigation or if you're struggling with the process of irrigation it's always important to contact your stomal therapy nurse who can provide advice on any changes that you may need to make or may need to review you to see if irrigation is still advisable for you. Now when you are finally confident with the process you can then go on to wearing what we call a stoma cap um, otherwise known as a mini cap or even a stoma plug. Now they are very small, almost a dressing-like pouch that simply covers the stoma itself. Some of them have filters that will still allow some gas and mucus to escape, but they largely simply cover the stoma or the plug gently inserts into the lumen of the stoma and that prevents any further bowel motions or mucus from coming out for that period of time. But obviously there's only a certain amount of time that you can wear a stoma cap for before you will start having bowel motions again or before you will have to irrigate again. Okay, so now that we've covered the process of stoma irrigation, let's look at some of the concerns or issues or problems that some people may experience once they've been taught irrigation. So some of you may find after irrigating that you get what we call spillage or a bit of overflow. And there may be several reasons for this. If you happen to be getting a little bit of watery output in between your irrigation sessions. Now, one of those things may be if you've got a bit of a tummy upset, you may have a bit of a tummy bug. You may have some diarrhea for whatever reason, or if you've eaten something a bit funny, it can still upset the gut and you can still have diarrhea with these sorts of conditions in between irrigations. It will not prevent you from having diarrhea. Now, some of the other causes of that can be if you are using too much irrigation solution or using excessive volumes of water, so above and beyond the 1 litre or 1.2 litres, that may cause the solution to travel further than where it is meant to. And what happens is the body retains it and holds on to it for quite a long time. And so eventually it takes a while for the remaining fluid to exit the body. So that's where you may find that you're getting some overflow in between your irrigation sessions. Now, if that is the problem, rather than what people tend to do by thinking that you have to put more water in, the idea is aimed more at try a little bit less water and see if that helps to reduce overflow in between irrigation sessions. Now I mentioned cramping a little bit earlier in the podcast. Cramping can be due to a few different things as I've probably already mentioned. Now it could be because the water is too cold and again it shocks the bowel and causes cramps. The water might be infused a bit too quickly. If the colon is not ready to receive the water, instilling fluid too rapidly can cause the same thing. The bowel contracts and you can get some cramping sensations from that. Uh, you can also get some cramping from not getting rid of the air in the irrigation. If you're irrigating air into your stoma, that can also cause cramping in the form of gas. So some people have that sensation as well. So make sure that you're emptying all the air bubbles out of your irrigation tube before you insert the cone and start instilling fluid. And as I mentioned earlier, if you do experience cramping, you should slow down the flow or stop the flow temporarily. Keep the cone in place until that subsides. You can take some deep breaths. You may want to stand up and relax, but don't remove the cone once that cramping subsides, you can continue to irrigate, but make sure that your water is not too cold because that might be the reason for the cramping as well. Now, cramping may also be a sign that the bowel is ready to empty, so it might not be a bad thing. Um, if you start to feel that cramping sensation and you've irrigated a significant amount of fluid, it may be time to take the cone out 
and close the irrigation sleeve and wait for the bowel to evacuate. Now, one of the other things that some people have often said is that uh, the amount of water that came out is not necessarily the amount of water that went in. Now, that is okay. That's what we call retention of water. And that can sometimes be caused by some people who are particularly anxious or nervous about the procedure. The bowel can cramp or the bowel can tighten. If you're feeling nervous, it will hold on to water and that can cause the bowel to spasm. Now, also, if you're dehydrated, remember from a lot of my podcasts all about the colostomy, the large intestine is designed to absorb water. So if you are dehydrated when you are irrigating your stoma, there is a small portion of water that may be absorbed into the large bowel, depending on how long you're leaving the water in there for. So don't be alarmed if you find that not as much water comes out as what you put in. Now, if you do find that you are retaining water, there are certain things that you can do. You can try things like having a hot drink. You can try abdominal massage. Again, as I said, you can stand up and move. Uh, Sometimes that will shift the remaining water. But as a general rule, if you are retaining a little bit of water, don't fret. It will absorb into your blood system and you will probably pee it out the next time. Now, if you do get to the point where you're irrigating daily and you're finding that you're getting a completely clear return, no fecal output, you may decide that you need to drop your irrigation times back a little bit. So the frequency of irrigation, you can draw it out a little bit longer. The idea of irrigation is to irrigate fecal matter from the colon. So if you're getting clear returns with every irrigation, you may find that you need to drop it back a little bit. But you may find also that that can vary. Sometimes if you have been unwell or if you're not eating as much at the time, if you've been fasting, you may find that you get clear returns on irrigation anyway because there's not enough substance to empty in the first place. Now, one of the things that some people do rarely get is what we call a vagal reflex, um, which is where you start to feel a bit weak or you might feel a bit giddy or woozy when you're irrigating. Now, not everybody experiences that, but it's caused by a couple of things. Sometimes if you are instilling too much fluid too quickly um, over several quick periods, so when I said you need to do it slowly over one installation, if you are instilling and removing and instilling and removing too quickly, it can make you feel quite tired or faint or weak. The other issue is uh, when you're stimulating the vagal reflex, when you're irrigating, you may find that you get um, sort of a a quick beating heart um, or a slow beating heart. You might feel a bit dizzy and that's because you're actually stimulating the nerve when you insert the cone to irrigate and that can give you that sensation of feeling a bit giddy and woozy. It's important to be sitting down when you're doing this process so that if you do start to feel that sensation that you can slow down or stop your irrigation until you do feel better. If that problem does persist though and you do become quite unwell, cease irrigation and contact your stomal therapy nurse because it may be a quite rare occurrence that you have an underlying medical condition that may need to be investigated by a doctor. Now, by talking about these problems and these issues that may arise with irrigation, I don't want to perturb you from the idea of considering irrigation. If you are a person who has an end colostomy and you are interested in the process, contact a stomal therapy nurse because colostomy irrigation allows you to gain some control back. Um, The important thing about irrigation is to relax, have a go at it. If you practice it at the same time every day, you will become very well versed in the process. And the secret to being successful at irrigation is to take your time, be at ease with the process and know that you really can't do any damage to the lining of your bowel and there are no harmful side effects from performing colostomy irrigation. And while the idea of irrigation and Touching your stoma and putting something into your bowel can seem unusual or it can seem distasteful to some people. Most people who do irrigate do discover the great advantages to being able to regain control over the bowel motions and ultimately be at ease with the process. Well, that's it for the irrigation conversation today. If you guys like the content that you've heard today, feel free to rate us on iTunes. You can even leave a comment. 
We are available on Spotify, Podbean, and you can even listen to podcasts on YouTube itself, so feel free to tune in on that. You can search for us at the Oztomy Nurse Project, O-Z-T-O-M-Y, coming to you from down under, because that is where your fully empty and irrigated stoma is. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. Talk to you next time.